This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Since I began exploring the world of custom mechanical keyboards, I've been looking for ways to apply my passion for 3D printing to the hobby. This week, I debated picking up some pads to sit between the PCB and switches on my Keychron Q1, just to see how they may impact the sound of this already awesome keyboard. And after digging around a bit, I decided to reverse engineer my own switch PCB buffer using 3D printable thermal polyurethane. If you're interested in my take on the Keychron Q1, stay tuned as I plan on releasing an in-depth review later this month. The goal of this modification is to further dampen the sound of the keyboard and lower its tone a little by adding a thin, rubber-like layer of TPU to absorb some of the higher frequencies coming from each keystroke. To start, I took a look at the Keychron.ca website where I found this perfectly perpendicular image of the Q1 with its PCB visible. If you can't find an image like this, you can always take your own. Just do your best to keep the camera perpendicular and zoomed in to avoid distortion around the edges. Then I imported this into a CAD package and scaled up the image so that it matched the keyboard's measured width of 327.5 millimeters. With the size set, I sketched out the approximate outline for a sheet to cover the PCB and drew a small cutout for each of the switch pins and south facing LEDs which I copied over each of the 81 switch locations. Beyond this, I made sure to leave cutouts for the stabilizers and the six screws that connect the PCB to the plate, which were estimated based on inspecting my PCB manually, since the case top blocks these details in the image I was working with. I then added a split line to divide the sketch in half so that it would fit on my Prusa Mark III print bed. If you have a large enough printer, you can get away with making it a single sheet. Following this, I extruded both halves to a thickness of 0.4 millimeters, downloaded the STLs, and repeated this for thicknesses of 0.6 and 0.8 millimeters to test how changes in thickness would impact the keyboard's sound. I sliced each component using Prusa Slicer 2.6 and printed them with some standard 95A TPU available on Amazon. The full print details and STL files can be found on my printables posting for this project which I'll link in the video description. If you find these sorts of DIY projects interesting, you may want to consider taking a look at today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that can help you upskill on any number of topics. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film, and video editing, but did you know that they have hundreds of career-focused classes too? So whether you're looking to improve your time management personal branding, or artistic abilities, Skillshare can help convert some of your downtime into new possibilities, and maybe even a career that goes beyond a typical one-size-fits-all job. To help keep my side hustles on track, I've been exploring Skillshare's curated collection related to building a creative career, and I've particularly enjoyed the simple tips on email correspondence when pricing your creative work by Jesse Ledeau, as well as Holly Collie Merchantson's inspiring but structured approach to uncovering your dream career through exploring your skills, their origin, and how to make executable plans around them. No goal is too small to start working towards, so to help you get there, the first 1,000 people to use the link I'll leave in the video description will get a one-month free trial to Skillshare. Consider joining today. Each half of the switch buffer sheets took between 39 and 74 minutes to print depending on the thickness, so I was able to print them all and test them in succession in a single day. To make it easier to tell the difference between the different thicknesses, I made the 0.4mm sheet blue, the 0.6mm sheet green, and the 0.8mm sheet red. Each was installed independently between the PCB and EVA foam that's included on the PCB plate assembly of the Q1. The switches were replaced and the sound test was conducted without moving the camera or microphone between tests. For reference, I recorded the unmodified keyboard as well as the standard three layer Tempest tape mod. And here's how they sound.
Overall, the 3D printed PCB switch buffer sheets do seem to impact the keyboard's sound, in particular the spacebar and unstabilized peripheral keys, but the effect was less pronounced than I expected. This mod does seem to cut down some of the sharper sounds compared to the unmodified version of the Q1, and the medium and thicker sheet also had an overall dampening effect. That said, there were two trade-offs that I noted in my testing. As the sheet thickness increases, it compresses the EVA foam a little, but the overall PCB plate assembly gets larger, which reduces the amount of plate flex. This is most evident when comparing the unmodified Q1 to the thickest sheet. This is something you'll want to consider if you're trying to avoid an overly stiff assembly. This increased thickness also led to a more important issue, with some of the switches being raised so high that it made consistent contact between their prongs and the PCB challenging. This was only an issue for the thickest 0.8mm sheet, but as a consequence, some of the switches randomly needed more force when pressed in order to trigger a keystroke, which was quite annoying. All things considered, this was a fun experiment. Moving forward, I'm going to be using the medium 0.6mm sheet with my Q1 because I think it sounds best. But let me know what your preference is, or if you have any other thoughts on printable modification projects that I should try, please let me know using the comments below. Otherwise, please hit the like button if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.